In pursuing self-inquiry, we need to look at the way we parcel up the experiencing that is going on. We do this in very profound ways. One of the, the fundamental distinctions we make is between I and other, between me and the external world, between me here perceiving something out there. This is a very fundamental distinction we make. And this has been explored in quite a lot of depth. It's a discrimination that doesn't actually hold up when you look into it. We've looked at the discrimination we make between reality and imagination. And even between life and death, that too is a discrimination. And in this chapter we're looking at the discrimination between waking and dreaming. This isn't something that you can objectively determine. It is a discrimination. How do you know you are not dreaming right now? There's no way of verifying this. There's no way of verifying it. There's no way of verifying it philosophically or scientifically. My argument in the past would be to say that you just know. You just have this intuition. You know intuitively that right now you are not dreaming. I quite like that argument actually. It's quite a good one. But I've noticed I have the same feeling when I'm dreaming. Now and again I try to apply techniques for developing lucid dreams. One of the techniques is to spot some absurdity and this will tell you that you're dreaming. For example, if you can fly and in this particular dream I noticed I could jump quite high off the ground. I was, I was almost flying and I knew well, this must be a dream. But I was having trouble believing it. Logically, I knew I was in a dream, but emotionally, this feeling, I had this deep intuitive feeling that I wasn't dreaming. I didn't want to acknowledge the fact that I was dreaming, even though I could jump effortlessly 10 feet into the air. So the point is, it's that deep intuitive feeling which is wrong. The deep intuitive feeling that I know I'm awake. I know I'm not dreaming. This is the, the level at which we need to look into. This is the level at which we need to inquire. It's the level which we need to question and doubt. So when it gets down to it, there's no difference between waking and dreaming. In fact, we can look at what they've got in common that they're both created by the mind. The waking state, as we experience it, is mind created. This is the scientific understanding. The sister continued. The same thing has been given two names for the sake of convenience. The two, waking and dreaming, are the same, like two cups of water. That which is common to them, which is their common substratum, is pure consciousness. Two cups of water. One cup of water, one cup of water. This is a very good analogy actually. What's the difference between two cups of water, one cup here and one cup here? Well the containers might be different, this cup might be different from this cup. But what about the water? Is there some essential difference between the water here to the water here? If we examine the water, we find it's homogeneous, don't we? We find it's H2O. Perhaps this water might be more impure than that water. Perhaps the water here might be more impure than the water here. But the actual H2O is not changed. There might be stuff in it, but that's not the water that's impure. It's just that there's something added to it. The actual water itself you wouldn't be able to tell which cup it was in, would you, by examining it. 
by examining the nature of the water itself. So think about that one, because this is how consciousness is. It's not even subject to the differences in space that the two cups are. So you're a cup of consciousness, I'm a cup of consciousness. But we don't even have that distinction between the separation and space. The consciousness is more identical than the two cups of water. So this is consciousness. It's consciousness which creates a distinction between waking and dreaming, between you and me. The attitude or the nature of a tree which draws nourishment through its roots and exists is pure consciousness. So that's what a tree does. It draws nourishment through its roots and it exists. That pretty much sums it up for a tree, although we could probably expand on that with all the chemical processes that are going on now. It's pure consciousness. Now you might have a problem with relating to a tree as pure consciousness, but again, think of the dream state. What's the difference between a tree in a dream, between a mountain in a dream, between the air and space in a dream? Is there any difference? We can say it's all consciousness, can't we? We can say it's the consciousness of the dreamer, or just consciousness. Similarly, when one's desires have turned away, and when the mind is at perfect peace, then there is pure consciousness. What we should say here is that there is realization of pure consciousness. Consciousness realizes its own nature instead of getting caught up in its desires and in its moods. It's when the mind is not being driven to anything in particular. And there are moments even in tumultuous lifestyles that the mind might be at perfect peace. There are these moments that occasionally we enter into 